Hey guys, Wally Renee here from the Medical University of South Carolina College of Dental Medicine. And, you know, I've been really going crazy trying to rack my brain about how we could economically reduce aerosols in the, in the operatory during routine dental care. The ADA and the CDC guidelines um, have kind of a strong recommendation for rubber dam isolation in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. For those of you guys who aren't huge fans of rubber dams, this is, this is going to be kind of a hard pill to swallow. But rubber dam isolation really does protect the, the operatory from extraneous salivary um, aerosols that would be generated during procedures. It probably does minimize that, especially if you combine it with uh, high volume evacuation. And, you know, it's just good for dentistry in general. And we could go down a philosophical route of whether or not rubber dam isolation is a good thing or a bad thing, but it is being recommended by many, many different third party uh, governing and guidance bodies. So I decided to kind of modify the age old rubber dam frame that really hasn't changed since the early 1900s. And what I did was I essentially turned it into an aerosol containment device where I hollowed out the frame and I added multiple different um, entrance ports. And I also added the hookup of the high volume evacuation with the slab ejector as well. And my thought is that this could really help contain dental aerosols. And I will be doing research to determine whether or not this is indeed true. Um, and I'll be comparing this against, uh, you know, isolite and rubber dam with an assistant and all sorts of different scenarios looking at uh, splatter and aerosols. But right now, this is kind of what I've developed and this is what we have. And uh, it's freely available to you guys. I hope you use it and, and enjoy it. And I'm going to go through a clinical case in a minute, an emergency endodontic procedure that we had to do. So let's go into how to actually fabricate one of these and put them together. The first thing that you do is you take your standard um, saliva ejector tube and you're going to snip it. Now remember that there is a metal wire running down the middle of this thing, so be careful. But you're going to snip that to whatever length that you think is ideal for, for you. Um, yeah, and so make sure that there's no sharp edges or anything like that. Now the metal wire is designed so that you could custom shape the saliva ejector tube, of course. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to need to attach this to the 3D printed frame. And you'll notice that there's several holes. There's ports all along the periphery of the frame. There's, uh, those are designed to specifically catch peripheral aerosols. There's a central port right in the middle that could be optionally attached to a high volume using the frame that I'm going to show you in a minute. And then there's the saliva ejector uh, attachment. So that's just going to go right in there. It's designed to go in, and then there's a final snap down when you push it and <clears throat> so then you could bend that to towards the dental assistant so now I'm going to show you the next step which is essentially attaching the high volume evacuation suction unit that is designed to snap onto the frame now this is 3d printed out of PLA PLA is a biocompatible plastic material it's designed to print flat on the build platform so there's no supports needed and print with 100% infill with a flow rate of 98 if you're using fused deposition modeling printing. Um, if you're using SLA or DLP or LCD printing, you could print out of medical grade autoclavable resins and autoclave them. So you should be doing this aseptically, rubber gloves um, with a mask on when you're printing these. You, uh, If you're printing out of PLA, you could sterilize with 70% isopropanol for uh, essentially five minutes, but make sure it's fully submerged. So you'll notice that this thing has a little tube connecting it um, to, which will connect to the, the frame. So you have to line up that tube to the hole on the bottom. So you see that hole right there, the central hole? There's a little, see that little tube protruding out of the back end of the high volume suction. So you're gonna line that up and it's super tight guys. So you're gonna wanna, it is designed to be kind of everything's precision fit together. So you're going to line up the tube with the hole and you're going to snap that down and it does it might take a little bit of wiggling um, to get that to, to go down but you're, it's really important to line up that tube with that port and once you have it lined up flip it over from the back side and then press with both thumbs on either side and snap it down and you should hear it it'll pop right in okay and then lastly, what you need to do is you need to secure that with the retention bolt, which is also 3D printed. And tighten that finger tight as tight as you could get it. And that's going to stabilize the whole 
basically the whole thing together. And of course, that hooks up to your saliva ejector there. Okay, and the, the high volume there is going to hook up to your high volume suction unit. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of aerosol containment with this device, especially if you combine it with a good assistant. Now, most of the aerosol is going to go in this high volume unit here. It's designed to pick up a lot more than a standard suction tip. The ports on the side are going to get any uh, peripheral or extraneous aerosol and go down the uh, saliva, uh, saliva ejector. Um, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about 3D printing this thing and then we'll go into kind of a quick clinical case so you could see it in use. Um, because I, I think you kind of need to see the whole story to understand exactly what it's doing. So. I like to use fused deposition modeling to print these. If you guys are scared of printing, don't be. It's really easy. Get a cheap FDM printer. Um, they could be like 200 bucks and they're really fun to use. There's lots of biocompatible plastics. They can be um, disinfected. And basically fused deposition modeling is like a giant glue gun. It uses a spool of plastic, in this case polylactic acid, which is a plant-based plastic and it heats it up and, and squirts it out in tiny little layers. So it's really fun stuff, guys. So, you know, if you're wondering how you get these made, that's what you do. Now, here we go. Clinically, we um, have attached the rubber dam to the, the 3D printed frame. We've now attached and turned on our suction unit so we could get that full effect there. And we are gonna lastly attach the high volume evacuation. So we've done that. And you can see the whole thing in, in utilization here. We don't even have the whole entire frame engaged, but you could see um, just how powerful this thing is. And it's just remarkable how much this thing captures. Um, and, and it's going to be really something that I think is gonna be great, especially if you combine it with a really good assistant. So, you know, I hope you guys use this, modify it and, and do what you will. I'm really excited to be able to share it with you.